Are you a failure? Have you failed at many things in life? Well, I'm here this morning to tell you that failure is only half of the journey. Good morning. I hope that your day has started right. And if it hasn't started right, well, you have some time still to fix it. And that's why we are here. We are here to drench this world in positivity and that includes your world as well. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea or your water. And let's get right into it. I want to just shout out to the label family joining us this morning. Yes, I see the first on the list is Sister Suri Bernard, Sister Shaman Boyce, Sister Jemmy Bruce Brewster. I see um, Brother Hendrickson, the headmaster is in. Sister Tanika Lewis is in. Brother Jerry Colado, good morning, good morning, all the way to where you are. Good morning to the chef. Brother Kenneth M. Hodge, good morning, good morning, good morning. Alright, today we're going to have such a good time this morning. And I hope that it gives you that boost to start your morning. Uh, uh, come on, mornings can be quite a challenge for some of us. I, I sometimes, you know, get up in the morning uh, from my bed. I go and sit down on the couch and I sleep or throw out for about a half an hour again. You know, sometimes it's hard on us. And I know some people who just don't like life at all and they just get up 3 o'clock in the morning. Something has to be wrong with those kinds of people. If you are one of those people, let's talk. Let's talk. I can help you through your problem. Alright. So, um, what I want to do is um, inform you, you know, yesterday we were having some challenges with the live stream on Facebook. Uh, well, on YouTube, we don't have much of that challenge. So, what I want to encourage you to do is jump into the YouTube as well. So whenever, if, if perchance, the same thing happens again, uh, you can log in or you can access the YouTube channel and that continues to flow or stream while the Facebook tends to give that a little trouble. So it's only on the Facebook end. So hopefully today we don't have that kind of issue and uh, we have a smooth sailing this morning in our program. All right. So that being said, let's get started with a prayer. And we'll get right into our session. Thank you for being here with us. Let's pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you because you are the one that we come to. You have never failed. You keep all your promises. You are mighty. You are powerful. You are caring, Father. Thank you for loving us and for Jesus, who has done so much for us on the cross and continues to do so much for us whenever we mess up in life. So we thank you, dear God, for allowing us this privilege to come to you in prayer. For we are grateful, dear God, so that we can have our sins forgiven. We can thank you for all you have done. We can ask of you favors, dear God, according to your will. And you will grant it according to your will, Father. Continue to bless us. Bless those who are sick. Bless those who are experiencing that cold weather. Those who are experiencing floodings. Those who are experiencing tragedy, hurt, pain, sorrow sickness whatever it is father bless them through this challenge and give them that comfort and healing and strength and, and continue to take care of us father and you have never failed us you have never left us dry you have never left us wanting father so we thank you so much in jesus name we pray amen all right sister suri said i used to get up 2 30 a.m to go to work she used to well I, I'm thankful that you've learned from that and that you now get up much later than that. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Therapy does work. All right. All right. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So we see we see more and more coming in into the chat. Good morning to Jeremiah Ramu. Good morning. Yes. Darren Buenaventura Colado. Yes, good morning, good morning. 
let me check across on the YouTube. Uh, remember to join in the YouTube as well. Just as a safeguard, should Facebook decide to play off this morning, we ready for them. All right. Good morning to Diana John. Good morning to Beulah Tate. Elizabeth Robert Stewart. Good morning to you. I see you, and I thank you for being here with us this morning in our session, in our booster session. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. All right. <laughs> Yes, yes, Daddy, can she learn? She learn. Yeah, that, that sleep must be too nice, man. I mean, <laughs> why would I, why would I give up my sleep to get up two thirty in the morning? I mean, I mean, it's work, yeah. I mean, it's work, but, but still, but still. Sometimes I go to sleep two thirty a.m. No, I could understand that, right? As a shaman, I could understand that, right? Sometimes that has happened to me as well, right? Just a habit, the old thing, you know. I, I, I go to sleep a little late. It used to be hard, and the cold showers used to help my word. It just got worse. She said the cold showers on top of that. No, I am. I mean, that's all the kind of showers I have, eh? But you know, I choose not to bathe or anything like that. I, I mean, it's easier to not bathe than to go to that coldness and that water that early morning. I used to be with rainwater and bucket long time, and that hour any morning, not not me. Uh -uh. To feed my family, yeah, 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 yeah. We have to feed the family, and yeah. there's no all kind of miraculous events and things. I get you, I get you. I'm being schooled by the headmaster here, so I'm learning. I am being learned. So nice, 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 nice. All right. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's a little insane, Adrian. That song you sung last week to the river. I am going. I love it and sing it every day. Heard it the first time last week. Well, interestingly, that's on the menu this morning. I plan to sing it as well. Uh, hopefully, my, my little sinus business um, allows me to do so. So, we will sing that as well this morning. So, yes, yes, yes. All right. Good morning, Sister Marceline George. Good morning, uh, Patsy Greg. Let me blow my nose there. <laughs> all right. You all know the struggle is real here. The struggle is real. That morning sickness is just kicking. All right, that morning sickness kicks in. Yeah, you have to, you have to heal, you have to heal. All right, good morning, Aaron Ostry. Good morning, bro. Vera Rupa, good morning, good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Glad to see the family is in. All right, just to those who just came in, I'm um, just reminding us. Uh, yesterday, Facebook kind of uh, played up a bit and cut the live stream. So continue with the YouTube, log into the YouTube label TV network. All right. And um, join the stream there as well. Should the live fail this morning, we have a safeguard, we have a security in the YouTube uh, channel. So you might want to do that as well. And so while we are doing that as well, so stay on Facebook. So hopefully it should go smoothly this morning. Um, hopefully all is well with the Facebook end of things. All right. Want to big up Sydney in the background there who is making us go live this morning. Thank you, brother Sydney. For making that magic happen with your tech fingers thank you so much all right um, I know definitely my boy Sydney is not one of those early 2 30 in the morning risers and I'm with him on that all right so we go so all right Lindy and Roberts good morning good morning all right let's sing a, a, a let's sing a couple songs there a few songs what do you think about Jesus he's all right what do you think about Jesus? He is dynamite. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Not 2.30. He, don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke to him today. He opened up my blinded eyes and set my spirit free. I love, I love, I love, I love that man from Galilee. So what do you think about Jesus? Tell me he's all right. What do you think about Jesus? He is dynamite. Yes. Good morning, Sister Deidre. Yes, yes, yes. Sister Shaman says, Israel, I know you're feeling because my sinus is on the up and up. Yep, can't take the, the coughing from the back trip. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The struggle is real, folks. Yep. Sister Wilma Hamlet, Hamlet. good morning, good morning. Now, I just want to shout out to those who are just um, tuning into the, the YouTube stream as well. Be sure to subscribe to the Label TV Network so you can get the live updates as well. And um, yeah, you feel free to chat away in the chat. 
with Sister Diana and Sister Bula and Sister Elizabeth, you know, jump in and chat and say good morning there as well. All right, so good morning, Sister Carolyn as well. Good morning, good morning, Sister Sharon. Manswell, good morning. All right. Let's, let's attempt that song um, again for Sister Lurine as well. Um, I had it on the list to sing to the river. I am going. Bear, bring sins I cannot bear. All right, let's sing that one. Let's sing that one there. To the river I am going, bringing sins I cannot bear. Come and cleanse me, come forgive me, Lord, I need to meet you there. In these waters, healing mercy flows with freedom from despair. Yes, I am going to the river, Lord, I need to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer, Lord, I need to meet you there. Come and join us in the river, come find life beyond compare. He is calling, He is waiting, Jesus longs to meet you there. For He is calling, He is waiting, Jesus longs to meet you there. So precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Oh, precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Oh, take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Yes, 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 yes. Come and join us. If you have not joined us in that life, come and join us. Because he is waiting. He is longing to meet you there. Yes. All right, all right. I'm going to sing a song again. Um, I heard it some years ago. Uh, just not too familiar with it. And last night in our session, we had a session last night. And our sister requested this song, Sister Sandra. So I'm going to sing... This I'm going to attempt it. It's called One Step at a Time, Their Savior. Sanoli, so bear with me. One Step at a Time, Their Savior. Let's go. If you know it, sing along. Sing along. Don't study body neighbors. Don't study who's sleeping. Let her get up with a nice warm melody. All right? Unless you can't sing. Well, that's another story by itself right there. But I know you could sing. All of us are singers here, right? Nice. Let's go. One Step at a Time. One step at a time, their Savior, I cannot take any more. The flesh is so weak and hopeless, I know not what is before. One step at a time, their Savior, 
Till faith grows stronger in thee. One step at a time, dear Saviour, Till hope grows stronger in me. One step at a time, dear Saviour, I am not walking by sight. Keep step with my soul, dear Saviour, I walk by faith in thy might. One step at a time, dear Saviour, till faith grows stronger in thee. Yes, one step at a time, dear Saviour, till hope grows stronger in me. One step at a time, dear Saviour, who got my faltering feet? Keep hold of my hand, dear Saviour, till I my journey complete. One step at a time, dear Saviour, Till faith grows stronger in thee. One step at a time, dear Saviour, till hope grows stronger in thee. One step at a time, dear Saviour, thou knowest all of my faith. One word from thy heart, dear Saviour, and heaven's marches of One step at a time, dear Saviour, till faith grows stronger in thee. One step at a time, dear Saviour, Till hope grows stronger in me. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. I thought I'd share that one uh, this morning. All right. One step at a time. One word from thy heart. Yeah? And mansions appear. It, it could be that sudden. All right? It could be that sudden. When God says it's time, it's time. All right? So you don't... You don't get time to prepare when that time comes. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared for when Jesus comes. All right? So don't get caught sleeping. Don't get caught slipping. Yes. Yes, Sister Elizabeth, blessings to you and your family. Adrian, thank you, thank you. And to you as well. God bless all of our label family. Yes, Sister Shaman says, love it. Haven't heard it? A long while. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, let's get into it and just a quick reminder, jump into the YouTube live stream as well, Label TV Network, should the live stream on Facebook give us trouble again, uh, you have that security there. And while you are there, subscribe to Label TV Network so you don't miss a thing, alright? So, we were talking about, we introduced the program this morning with failure, are you a failure? Well, I want to tell you this morning, and I shared this lesson on Sunday. So if you heard it on Sunday, you can cover your ears or you can listen it again, all right? And so failure is only half of the journey. Failure is only half of the journey. And let me explain, all right? And the passage I want to go to, and if you have your Bibles, it's good to turn there uh, with me. Luke 22 verse 31. Luke 22 verse 31, yeah? That's what we're going to look at this morning. Jesus was... You know, about to eat with his disciples, and he had some messages, parting messages for them. You know, and so he said one of them will betray him. Of course, we know it was Judas, and then he sent Judas to do his business. What you do, do quickly, and so on. Luke 22, verse 31, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, he's talking to Peter here. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. That your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brethren. 
we were having a discussion in one of our sessions and Brother Dwayne Utley mentioned this verse and I said, I'm, I'm going to work on a, a lesson on this and I did. I did work on a lesson and this is the lesson here. All right. And so Jesus was about to depart from his earthly quest, but he had some news for his disciples. You know, after he told Judas what he had to do, Judas would have left and so on. All right. Now, I, I know we're going to blame Judas for why Judas had to do this. He was with Jesus. He was one of Jesus' closest friends and so on. Well, I'll tell you this. It had to happen, folks. Judah, J Jesus came to die. And this was all in his plan. So it wasn't a miraculous, magical thing. And oh, oh suddenly this just happened out of the blue. No, no. Um, Judas made a choice. Yes, but it had to happen. All right. So we do some things too, right? So don't watch Judas with critical eyes. The problem was how Judas handled it. We see how Judas, Peter denied Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus, but both of them had two different responses. Remember that? Two different responses to how they acted. They messed up and two different responses. So, Jesus then turned to the remaining disciples, single out Simon Peter, and said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, on reading that, you might think that he's just talking to Simon there. But Jesus was saying that Satan was interested in shaking them up. The you here in this passage is plural. Alright, keep, keep with me. Stay with me. I know I saw getting preachy this morning, but stay with me. Failure is only half of the journey. Right? The you here, when he said, Satan has asked for you, that he may say, if you... As we, that's plural. He's talking to all his disciples. Satan is going to shake them up. He is going to sift all of them as wheat. Well, let me give some context to that because I'm sure none of us here ever sift wheat before. No, 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 not talking about sifting flour. That's a different thing. I'm talking about wheat from the field. Right? Wheat is like a grassy kind of thing. It grows on these little stalks with some little seed things with some fur on it and some... You know, you're looking bushy, grassy looking. You all know it, right? Kind of like a balizé flowers. That kind of thing, right? It's not a balizé, right? But it's kind of like that. And so inside that contained the wheat. So there were two steps to sifting wheat in the Bible times. I'm going to give you two steps because I'm going to share with you the context as to what, say, what Jesus means by Satan is going to sift them as wheat. They understood exactly what Jesus was saying. They got the picture vividly in their head. But we now have to study it because we don't live in their culture. So, first of all, there's two steps. First of all, the threshing takes place. Threshing. Alright. The first step in the process of sifting wheat is to loosen the chaff from the edible grain. That outer coating, that shell, they will loosen this. It's called threshing. The old-fashioned way to do this is to spread the wheat onto a floor made from stone, concrete, or earth. And here's what. You know how they would lose it? They would beat it with a flail. So they're going to put the wheat on the ground. And they take a, a, a piece of tool that they have and they beat it, kind of like what we have a cocaine broom. And they would beat it, beat it with a flail. And that would loosen up the outer skin or outer shell. From the wheat. Now hold on. Remember Jesus is saying Satan is going to sift them as wheat. So first of all, you see here that to get the thing loosened, you have to beat it. And it's on the ground. Winnowing is the next step. Threshing, then winnowing. The next, next step is called winnowing. You ever about a winnowing fan? You just can have a fan like an accordion. Right? To keep fires going. Right? It involves some breeze. Nice. Um... People who used to do fireside long time had, I think it's called a pukni, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, that's the word my parents used to call it, a pukni or something like that. You take a PVC and blow into it into the fire. Right, winnowing fire was something similar, like an accordion. They would squeeze it and it would send a breeze through to the fire to uh, take the fire. Right, nice. Sister Sham is the same thing here they used to do with rice. Yes, my mother used to plant rice and that's what she told me basically. They had what they call a rice box. And they will beat the rice and so on. Yes, yes, yes. Alright, so winnowing is the next step. Where the loosened chaff is removed from the grain. The old-fashioned way of doing this was to throw the grain in the air. Remember that was loose? 
The lighter chaff would be blown off by even a decent breeze. The heavier grains would fall back to the ground below where they were thrown. Now, hear me out, hear me out. The chaff is loosened now and when they throw it up, it separates from the grain. The chaff is light because it's that light shell. And the grain, which is heavier, falls to the ground. The wheat gets sifted so the hard outer shell can be broken through and removed. What remains is the actual pure wheat grain. Something they could use now. Follow me. You'll see where I'm going with this. Sift by definition in the passage means this. An inward agitation. Are you all getting this? <laughs> Satan is going to sift you as wheat. Jesus told him that Satan has asked for you. First of all, Satan asked for permission to touch you. He has to ask for permission. That he may sift you as wheat. We look at the process of sifting wheat. That beating, then the breeze blow and the grain remains. Alright? But sifting that is used in this passage is an inward agitation. A shaking up, but from the inside. So what is Satan attacking? Satan is attacking the thing which you possess. Remember when we did the lesson on trust? Versus faith. Faith is what you possess. Trust is what you employ. Based on what you possess. Trust is what you do. Based on what you possess. So I have faith. Satan is trying to get at my faith. He's trying to derail me. He's trying to make me distrust in God. Remember he did that in the garden? Yep. When he caused man to fall or man to sin. He said... Did God really say you'll die? Ah, you will not surely die. So he's trying to help them to distrust in God or have doubt. Yes, that's what he's doing. So when he's sifting us, it's not, no, we might get beaten on the outside, but what he's trying to do is derail us on the inside. If he can take our faith away from us, he has us. It's an inward agitation. That sifting there is an inward thing. And I want you to look it up. Don't just take my word for it, but it's an inward thing. It's an inward stirring up, shaking up, sifting. But there's beauty in this beast. When one is sifted by Satan, the pure grain should remain while the shell or the unwanted is shaken out. The real you remains after being sifted. Hear me out. Think about James chapter 1. James chapter 1 tells us the trying of your faith produces patience. Remember that gold and that, that, that refiner? He will, he will put that gold through ex extensive extreme heat and the gold will melt under the heat. And then some dirty stuff, or it's called dross, will float to the top. And he's going to scrape up that dross because he doesn't want that in there. That's the unwanted, that's the, the, the not so good stuff. And he's going to take that out, scoop it out. And eventually just the pure gold remains. And when that gold is hard and it's shining, the refiner looks down into it and sees his face. Are you all getting this? God has put us through the refiner's fire. He's putting us through some fire. And so when we all the, all the unwanted stuff has come out, and the real you remains. Lord give me patience. And you put it through the test. And you pass the test. That unwantedness comes out. And the real truthful you. The pure you remains. The real Christian remains. He's able to look down on you. And see his reflection. Off of you. That's the concept there. So yes. Sifting is going to take place and there's a good thing in it. Now hear me out. The shaking does not feel nice. The shaking does not feel nice. Nobody is being sifted, enjoys the sifting. It is not made to, um, you know, that sifting is not made to tickle you or, or, or you know, gently kind of move you a bit. No, it's made to derail you. It's made to take you out of the race. not a pleasant experience and this is why it's critical to possess faith in the almighty God 
And when you are being tested, trust them to get you through. I often go to the ATM to get some little money to spend because money are to spend. But if I don't put money in the bank, how will I get money when I put in my card? I have to put in money to get money. Otherwise, if I put in my card and I didn't put in any money, the machine will laugh at me. And the person in the back of me going to laugh. That's the thing with faith. If you are not putting in faith, when it comes time for you to trust in God, you are not going to trust in God. When it really comes. But I'm not finished yet. Verse 32 then says, Luke 22 verse 32, But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Now hear me out. Remember when he said Satan is requesting to sift you as wheat. He's talking to, he was talking to all of them there. But listen in verse 32. He says, but I have prayed for you. That you there is singular. He's specifically speaking to Peter. All you hear me out, you know. All you hear me out now, please. He's talking to them in the beginning. All of them will be sifted. But he's telling Peter, I have prayed for you. That your faith will not fail. Why just Peter? He's speaking specifically to Peter now. So why not all of the disciples? Let me explain to you. Because failure is only half of the journey. Let's read on. And when you have turned back, Peter, strengthen your brethren. Peter's faith was going to fail. I'm going to explain why just Peter alone. Peter's faith was going to fail. He denied Jesus three times. Not long after that. That same night. And when Jesus died, he went back to fishing. John chapter 21. All of them went back fishing. He says, I'm going away. I'm going to fish. But failure is only half of the journey. The image that I have in my head when I read this passage is a swimmer, an Olympic swimmer, swimming in that race. They swim fast and they reach the one end. And they reach that end of that pool, but the race is not over yet. What do they need to do? They need to turn back and finish the race. They need to turn back. So when they reach to that end, that's just half of the journey. They need to turn back. Peter is being told here, when, but I pray for you that your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, implying that he's going to turn. Oh, <laughs> man. Jesus knew that he was going to fail. Jesus knows we are going to fail. But he wants us to do what? He wants us to turn back. Failure is half of the journey. Don't stay a failure. Now hear the thing. All of us are failures. We fail at many different things. But failure is not the ending of the journey. Failure is half of the journey. Return. Please. Return. Jesus knew Peter's faith would fail during his sifting, but he desired that Peter would return to him and use his failure as a tool to help his brethren. Simply put, we may fail in our sifting period. We're going to be shaken and it's going to be an inward shaking. He's going to try to take away our faith from us. We may crumble under the pressure. Yes, we may crumble, we may give in because it might be too much for us. But God desires us to get up and return to Him. He restores us so that we can restore others. Hear me out. Why did God, why does God comfort us? I think as Peter was saying, He comforts God, who, the Father of mercy is the God of comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we will be able to comfort others also. Read the passage, you'll see for yourself. The reason why he comforts us is so that we can comfort others also. Why is Jesus telling Peter, turn back and strengthen his brethren? Because he knows he's going to fail. He knows he wants him to come back. But when he comes back, he's coming back to help his brethren as well. I have been where you are now. I'm going to help you through this. No, he ain't let him shoot him down. Well, how are you failing so? You have a bad attitude. You're not doing this correct. Instead of doing all of that, help them through the process. Help 
strengthen them because you have been where they are now. Help them. Amara said one time, never waste a good mistake. Never waste a good mistake. You do something wrong and you fail, guess what? Learn from it because if you waste that mistake and you don't learn from it, you're going to get it again. Don't waste a good mistake. I'm, I'm, I'm simply saying here, if you didn't get it, we are failures at things in life. But we don't have to remain that way. It's half a journey. We still have some journeying to do. Come back to him. Return to him. Every one of us face temptation and every one of us give in to some of them. But we need to return to him. That's the important part there. All right? But here's why he singled out Peter. Because not everyone is equipped to handle the pressures of problems. Not everyone is equipped. But in each group, at least one should be strong enough to pull the others through. So Peter is, is, is being told by Jesus. He says, you, you, you're going to have to be strong for your brothers because they're not going to make it too well. But I want you to be strong for them. His brethren were also going through Sifton. They too went through Sifton. As he said, all of you are going to go through Sifton. <coughs> they too were discouraged. And they too would fail. But in comes someone who loves them. Who cares for them. And who is there to strengthen them. There's a passage in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 10. Woe to him who falls. With no one around to pick him up. Woe. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 10, Woe to him who falls when no one is around to pick him up. Are you all hearing this? Imagine you fall and you fail in life in your Christian walk and nobody is there to strengthen you. Are you all seeing how important you are in somebody's life? Never for a minute think that you are not important. You are, you are being strengthened to strengthen others. Go to him who falls with no one around to pick him up. We may be failures at times, but we may also be strengtheners at times. Let's get to strengthening our brethren. Use your failure as a tool to help others that are facing the same struggle. Use your failure as a tool to help others that are facing the same struggle. There's a sister that I have grown to love and is dear to my heart, Sister Laverne Rosita Davis. She has been through life and she has walked in some serious, serious upsetting moments in her life. She, you name it, she has been through it. Some of them she made some choices that caused her to walk away from Jesus for 15 years. When I spoke with her, we went to the counseling room in the back step of the dorm of the preaching school. And she was saying, you know, and she was very sad and distraught. She says, for 15 years, I walked away from God. I, I did not serve Him. I did not spread the good news about Him. She is lamenting. Now she is faithful still to this day. She is faithful to this day, but she is quarreling with herself. That for 15 years, she left the Lord. It bothers her. Some of us leave for longer than that and it's not bothering us. And she is concerned that she would have left the Lord and I'm not serving for that period of time, but I had to remind her, I said, Sister, you, you, you are a warrior. You have been championing for the cause of Christ ever since I know you. She uses her experiences and her failures to help many people today. I would dare say thousands of people today. She has even written a book, and I suggest you look into it. Do you know who you are sitting next to? That's the book that she wrote. Do you know who you are sitting next to? It's a good reminder in that book. And she's very candid. She's very raw. She's very open in that book. 
And she's telling us that we need to be mindful of who is sitting next to us. We don't know what they're going through. They don't know what we are going through. But we have a responsibility to strengthen them. She is one that didn't waste her mistake. She learned from it. Yeah, yeah. Sister, Sister Sharman says that she's been through the mill. That's right. She has been sifted. And by the way, she said this to us. She said, if you if you say you're struggling right now, you lied. And she is right. I have fought addiction for many years. And I can still say that I struggle with those addictions. Do I give in? No. But I struggle with it. And that's the thing. We may not give in, but the temptations are going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming our way. Just hold straight. Don't give in. Because Satan is wanting us to be unprepared because he wants to have us for himself. He wants us to distrust God. He wants to get back at God. And because we are on God's side, we are in the line of fire. Guilty by association. And so we are going to face his arrows because we are on God's side. And he's not trying to tickle us or bring some slight discomfort. He's trying to devour us. He's trying to ruin us. <sighs> Bible says, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Are we? <laughs> so are you a failure? And if you are, I want to encourage you that it is only half of the journey. It's not the full journey. Do not give up just yet. Turn back. And guess what? Strengthen your brethren. You will find the more you talk about it. And that's something Sister Levin said as well. When you keep talking about it to others, you'll find yourself becoming stronger in the fight. You just try it and see for yourself. I'm telling you. I am telling you. You know to yourself if you're not talking about it, your conscience is going to bother you. That's what's keeping you from talking about it. You don't want to be a hypocrite. And I'm speaking for myself. So you don't talk about it because if you talk about it, and that's what I've battled with, I don't want to talk about it because if I talk about it, I know I am still battling with it. I'm going to be a hypocrite. Talk about it. And be, I'll have him out. Hear me carefully now. It's not a boast. But be real to your listeners, your audience. I too fail in this. Let them know it humanizes you. Imagine preachers dehumanizing themselves. They are making themselves look like they are infallible. But no, connect with your audience. We all make mistakes to Peter. Peter failed. Paul failed. Who is you? You're going to fail. But guess what? It is not the end of the journey. Now hear me out. You want to share this live with people. Eh? You want to share this so that people can be encouraged too. Even if they see it a bit late. You want them to realize that they might be failing. But don't stay a failure. Hear him out. Never let failure be the end of your journey. Never let failure be the end of your journey. You fail? Yes. It's not a matter so what? Don't be arrogant about it. You fail? It is not right to fail. When it comes to the spiritual life. So don't be comfortable failing. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we will fail at times. But we have brethren who are going to strengthen us. Brethren who have turned. But they have turned back. You all getting me? Failure is only half of the journey. I want to leave that encouragement with us. Sister Bernard is saying when you do not talk about it. We give the devil more power. I have to agree with you there. I have to agree with you there. Sister Diana John is saying, I'm so thankful to God for giving me the strength to withstand through the period of Satan sifting so I can know how to help others. Amen. And you're hearing brethren saying this. Sometimes the sifting comes in sickness. Sometimes the sifting comes with a nagging family member. I know to watch your husband, know what your wife. Sometimes use the one <laughs> that nagging. Sometimes use the one that Satan is using to save others. Hmm. But failure 
It's not the end of your journey. Just like that swimmer, he reaches the end, but he has to turn back and finish the race. But use your experience to help somebody. Nobody understands it like you do. Now, you may not understand how they feel, but you can understand what they are going through. You all hear me? Never tell somebody I understand how you feel. No, you don't. We all feel differently. Our pain threshold is different. So don't tell somebody, I know how you feel. No, you don't know how I feel. You might understand what I'm going through. Because you might have been there and been through worse even. So just be there for an understanding. And sometimes you just have to sit down right next to them, give them a hug and say nothing at all. Sometimes you see them going through some hardship. Just, 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 just give them a little something, give them a little assistance, a little financial something, a little, you know, food or, or something, whatever it is the need is, you just give that and you don't have to say a word. Sometimes they need words. But we all fail. But we are not failures. You hear me? Because if you remain down when you fall down seven times you need to get up the eighth time and that, that right there that's a passage and, you, and that right there shows me that i fell the first time and i got up again and i fell another time but i got up again so i fell down seven times but i'm ready to get up at eight time again i'm ready again but you have to be honest with yourself Hend hendrix is saying real yeah you have to be real you have to be real. You have to be honest with yourself. And admit that you're going through some wrong thing. Why do you think that they say in an alcoholic anonymous, my name is Peter and I'm an alcoholic? Why do, you, why do they say that? Because you have to first acknowledge that there is an issue within you. And it needs remedying. Once you can recognize that there's an issue, the next step is easier. The hardest step is seeing the problem, and some people don't ever see themselves as a problem. I've often, uh, I've often had bouts with leadership in the church, and then I realized after much talking with people that I would have been the problem. What I stood for was right, but I was causing a problem by arguing, and by being a resistance. We have no resistance in the church. No activist group in the church. We should be active, but no activist group in the church. And that, that was I. That was me. I had to step aside and apologize to the leadership for arguing with them. I said, I, I should not have. My stand still remains, but I don't want to argue anymore because I am not growing spiritually. Neither are you. And the congregation is suffering. I had to be real, but the problem was not them. Alone, I needed to move aside. Sometimes I just need to move aside a bit. You is the problem. You hear me? You is the problem. But here's the thing. That's half the journey. Once you identify that now, you can begin the healing process, the fixing process. And that's why you go to God in prayer. Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And that's still his prayer for us today. He's still in the season of behalf. He's still imploring us, don't let your faith fail. And I think Jesus has that message there for us. Sister Bernadette is saying, I went through some trials a couple of years ago with my son. And now I have overcome. I use the situation to help other parents. Amen. And, and, and I'm just showing you. You are seeing in the chat. There are brethren who have been through some stuff. And they, have, they, they, they attest to this. They did not stay a failure in it. They did not stay down. They helped others through their challenges and they still are doing that use your gift your experience is your gift everybody has a struggle every struggle has a solution every solution makes a good story your story can help others through their struggle help someone through their struggle please all right so that's the end of the ted talk Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And I hope that this was encouraging to you because I am still a work in progress. So when I speak this, 
I have to speak to me as well. There are some things I still need to sort out in myself. But we are all in this journey together. Yeah? Sister Shaman, I don't know if you could... I don't know if you can see my paper my thing, right? But uh, it probably, you probably can't see it. So the shaman is requesting a song all the way my savior leads me. Right? Now hear me out there, will you? I don't know if you all can see the camera there. Well, let me see. If... There we go. So the shaman, I don't know if you can see it there. But that's the song that is very next in the list. You all seeing that? I don't know if you all seen it. <laughs> Alright, I'll just show you how God is working. Eh? Alright, I'll just show you how God is work and I'll show you the proof the proof is there. Alright? And I am going to sing the song. I even have it pulled up on uh, my device here. Alright? All the way my savior leads me. And so we're gonna sing that song now. Alright? I don't know how she thought of that. Sister L Sister Lurleen spoke about to the river. I sang that word. Says a shaman is requesting all the way my savior leads me. Guess what? <laughs> I don't know how this happens, but but God. So let's sing all the way my savior leads me. All right. All the way my savior leads me. So sing along at home again. Very very good words in this song. And by the way, the the author of this song, Fanny J. Crosby, she could not see. She was visually impaired. And she wrote this song. Now think about it from her perspective. Somebody leading her. She's not able to see as we can see. So she's dependent on somebody to lead her. Now think about it as we sing this song. Alright. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I know this tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, yea, by faith in Him to dwell. For I know what is before me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know what is before me. Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me. Chase each winding path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter. And my soul a thirst may be gushing from the rock before me. Blow a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me. Blow a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me. Oh, the fullness of His love, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothing mortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. Amen, amen. This song has been on my heart. I was sharing with them last night because last night I sang this song in our session, in our development and support session. Um... We, I sang the song and I was explaining to them that this song has so much memories and meaning to me. Uh, I was a small child. I was very, very small. And my parents would go visiting to various people, various people, over 20 something people, I remember. And we used to sing this song for them. Whenever there's a wake as well, we used to sing this song. 
and, and that has been etched into my mind for all of these years. All right. Now, all of these people, these older ones that we used to visit, every one of them has now gone on into eternity. But I still remember this song and I associate this song with them and with that memory that I used to have going visiting with them. Hear me out. Go visiting to people. It, 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 it stay, this stuff stays with you. All right, carry your children. Yeah. Let me tell you this, eh? when you're visiting people and the sick and the elderly, carry your children with you. Let them get into the habit of visitation. Let them grow to love them. No, yeah, they might not like the smell of the house. I still remember the smell of the house. I have no problem with that smell. I still smell limacol. I still smell that alcalado glacial. I still can smell those things and I have no problem with it. Why? I grew up visiting brethren. Some of them, um, you know, their caretakers were not even taking proper care of them. But I, I, I remember all of that. Let these things stay with you. Go visiting, please, and take your children with you. If you don't take them with you, they'll never grow up to do this thing. They'll never continue this, this practice. It's a strange thing to them, but carry them even from a young age. Let the babies go as well. And by the way, not, not everybody has this, but a lot of older folks, they love to see little children. All right? It's their therapy. It's their therapy. Not everybody can handle younger children and so on, so sometimes they might agitate them. You weigh out the situation, but again, go visitation. And that stuck with me. When I sing this song, anytime I sing this song, it has a, a deep meaning to me. It has such memories for me as well. And so again, you know, keep keep visiting your brethren. Keep strengthening them. Alright? I want to acknowledge the birthdays. I want to acknowledge the birthdays. By the way, I remember every one of those persons by name. Eh? Every one of those persons, I remember them by name. And I was young. Hear me, oh God, hear me out, hear me out. Keep, keep, keep strengthening your brethren, please. All right? These are the older ones that used to visit other people when they were in their prime. Visit them too. All right? Yes, so we want to acknowledge the birthdays. We have Sister Sarah Kun Kun. Her birthday is today. All right? And uh, we will pray that God continue to strengthen you and, and bless you. And I hope you have a wonderful time as you celebrate this special day. Every one of us, who have uh, uh, birthdays and so on, hey, we celebrated you today. You may have an anniversary today. We celebrate you as well. All right? Um, so, hey, keep in mind, keep in mind, um, it might be the smallest of accomplishment. You celebrate it, please. We're looking at progress. All right? Not success. Progress. Progress. Yes? Sister Patsy said, yes, but they learn by example. Children bring a special joy to the elderly. That's right, that's right. All right. So let's sing that happy birthday and happy anniversary song for those who are celebrating the day. Uh, big you up, big up yourself. All right. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Anniversary, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Our birthday's anniversary as well. Just so you know. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. God is blessing you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful. Have fun. I'll bring me a piece of cake. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. To you. All right. Lots of love from our label family. Continue to uh, continue to have a wonderful day. Uh, you who are celebrating, and every one of us. I want to thank our label family for showing up today. I want to thank Facebook for behaving himself today. So thank you, Facebook. You are such a, a good fella. You are a good boy. Thank you so much, Facebook. I want to thank Sydney. Sydney continues to make the magic happen. Um, 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 he gets up early just for this program. Hey, big up you, Sydney. Big up brother Leon, who continues to encourage us day after day with his inspirational, motivational messages. And even from the word, uh, big up you, brother Leon. All right. Um, also, big up the High Noon crew. Yes, sir. 
the coral break up the hydrogen crew they have been doing a marvelous job all right um middle of the day while you're eating your lunch you're, you're, you're having a good time um you know they're addressing some serious topics there so tune into them monday wednesday fridays big up to the mic at night crew as well yes you can get them all right here on Nabel. yes um also want to big up uh m a home store test the season to go shopping at m a home store all right fellow you, you check them out south trinidad you you check them out we'll get more details to you but check out m a home store for all your shopping needs and we want to thank them for that huge support that they continue to support us with and all of you all of you who wants to support us and all of you who have been supporting us hey thank you so much thank you thank you so much you are an amazing family uh, and you make my morning every morning all right yes 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 and again the time has changed or shifted from six to seven but hey we still here and it shows that you are still interested in boosting your day share the live so that others can be boosted as well all right and with that in mind i want to say have a beautiful day have a wonderful day keep that smile going a genuine smile keep strengthening others keep visiting others all right somebody's depending on your smile your happiness let them see christ in you so that they will glorify our father who is in heaven have a blessed and wonderful day i'll see you another time lord willing goodbye Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Ooh. A little loaded, but hey, have a blessed day. Goodbye.